Hey everyone, the topic of this video is how long should you spend training your dog in training sessions and the answer is it really depends on a few factors which I'm going to be talking about but it's extremely important to remember that every single interaction that you have with your dog is training them something so you're technically training your dog a hundred percent of the time that you interact with your dog and I don't mean to overwhelm you with that idea but you need to be mindful of your interactions with your dogs between training sessions because they're constantly learning every interaction that you have. Here's a list of factors to consider when deciding how long a training session should be for a specific behavior. You want to consider the dog's age, the dog's size, the personality of the dog, how mentally or physically taxing the behavior might be for the dog, how physically fit the dog is, how the dog is feeling on that specific day, and the rate of reinforcement that you're going to be using. The first factor that I mentioned is age. If you've just brought home a young puppy, I suggest keeping training sessions short, and for me, short is under 60 seconds. So if you want to work on more stuff in a day, you can do multiple training sessions throughout the day. If you have a puppy that gets very excited by food, I suggest training after a meal. I like to feed all my dogs a big breakfast so that they're not overexcited by the food, during the training. But if you have a puppy that seems uninterested in your treats or, your, or the kibble that you're using to train, you can use the breakfast to train the dog or train before a meal. After a few successful short training sessions with your puppy, you can then experiment with the length of the session and if your puppy looks disinterested, it's no big deal. Just make sure to keep the session shorter the next few times. Keep in mind that older dogs might not want to train as long as they used to when they were younger, so you might keep sessions a little bit shorter for older dogs to keep them in the game. If you're using food to train your dog in training sessions, size plays a role in how long the session can go on for. So for um, bigger dogs, they can eat more food because they have a bigger stomach, but little dogs can't. So you can cut the treats extremely small, for these two little guys, they can even be the size of the head of a pin. Um, if it's cheese, something like cheese like this. I also use the toy dog kibble for them, which is very small. And then another thing is if I have larger treats like the toy dog kibble, I measure it out before the training session. And then when the bag ends, the training ends because there's just not enough room in their stomach to continue training. The personality of the dog can also help determine how long training sessions should be. My little chihuahua Kiko here has always preferred short sessions and if I go too long then she starts to slow down and get disinterested by the training. My terrier here is the complete opposite. When I kept sessions extremely short, under 60 seconds, he started to get way too excited by training. So instead of doing short sessions throughout the day, I would do longer sessions like three minutes and five minutes. And I found out that by doing that with him, it made him way less excited about training, which was good because he was too excited. He started making noise like growling and whining while he was training. And by having the longer sessions, it helped with that issue that I was having with him. I have three really easy border collies, so I can't screw up very much because they could train forever and not get over aroused or frustrated during the training. The next factor is how mentally or physically taxing the behavior is for the dog. So mentally taxing might be that the dog is learning a new behavior and they've never done anything quite like that behavior. So um, if you're teaching something new, usually dogs tire faster than if they're learning something that they've already learned and you might be proofing it or just reminding them about it. And physically taxing, there are some behaviors like laying <laughs> that are very easy for dogs to do and there are other behaviors like um, sit pretty, for example, when a dog's learning sit pretty at first, they don't have the muscles to sit pretty for a long duration and so by repeating the behavior, you're, the dog is actually getting tired. So one solution that you can do is train multiple behaviors in a training session and if one is physically taxing, then the next behavior you could work on is laying down. So you could do sit pretty and then laying down and then maybe circle around you so that the dog isn't getting tired from the training which will then turn into disinterest in training. When training behaviors involving movement you also want to keep in mind how physically fit your dog is because for example if you asked me to do 20 push-ups I would say no thank you um, but another person would say oh wow that's really easy I can do that and it, the same goes for dogs so um, the fitter your dog is the longer they usually can work 
So if your dog is out of shape or overweight, they're going to probably not be able to work as long as your friend's dog who is physically fit. The next factor is rates of reinforcement. That means how many treats you give out during the training session. So if you're using a high rate of reinforcement, like I did, for example, in the video where I was teaching my dog to bow, I was giving treat, treat, treat after treat, I'm gonna keep the training session extremely short, one, so the dog doesn't get full, and two, so the dog doesn't get overwhelmed. If you're using a, a, a low rate of reinforcement, maybe you're working on a stay with duration, then the training session could be much longer. So for example, if you're working on a stay and your dog is staying for one minute and then 20 seconds, um, the training session is going to be much longer than um, teaching a, a sit pretty behavior. The final factor that I'm going to talk about is how the dog is feeling on a specific day. Now there are some dogs that even when they don't feel very well, they'll still be super excited to do training, but there are other dogs that they're just not having a very good day and it starts to show in the training session. And so if you notice your dog is seeming disinterested or overly frustrated for some reason, I suggest ending the session and then trying again later or instead trying another day. And instead of training, you can uh, substitute that for giving them a food puzzle or a yummy chew stick to entertain themselves with and create some variety in their day and then save the training for later when they're feeling better. The method that I like to use for determining how long training sessions can be is doing a few short training sessions and then doing a trial session where you go on a little bit longer and see how the dog does. If the dog does great, then I suggest doing a few short training sessions again, not back to back, and then another trial session where the training goes on for even longer than the previous trial and see how the dog does. Now I find that when you vary what you do in training sessions, for example, training a few different behaviors in the same session, that can actually help dogs um, work for longer in training sessions, where if you work on the same behavior for two minutes, dogs can get bored, depending on the behavior. For most dogs, I suggest the majority of training sessions be between 30 seconds and five minutes, but then you might wanna do a much longer training session because you've gone to a field where you wanna work with your dog and then you work with your dog for 20 minutes. Um, and the dog could be fine with that. Some dogs can work forever, like my Border Collies here, and that brings up a really important fact that they can work more than they should. So I like to set a timer when I do active behaviors so that I don't overwork them. One thing I also do is play a song on my phone. So when the song ends, I know about how long I've been training because sometimes I can get a little bit carried away. So it's important to keep in mind that when you're working with dogs that can just keep going. And finally, I want to mention that this video is dedicated to my YouTube sponsor, Shiva Aiken. Because of her and my other YouTube sponsors, I am able to create videos for the general public on how to train your dog without the use of physical or psychological intimidation. So thank you so much to all my sponsors. See you later, guys.